Because we have quite a few connection points and we're expecting a few more, if you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the uh, chat group. And we will have time after the three presentations to give you uh, opportunity to ask questions as well. So I really appreciate you guys uh, are here um, and part of this seminar. Uh, I am going to just do a quick intro on what to expect today. The seminar is about two and a half hours in length. There are three presenters. We'll have about 40 minutes of presentation. And it's around this scripture that we have recognized over the years that Deuteronomy 8.18 says that God has given us the power to create wealth. And <clears throat> what does that look like? That includes financial wealth as well. And uh, we want to just encourage you that the ability to be able to do that um, is, is uh, there. And we've seen that happening uh, for the three presenters and fathers that we've seen over the couple of years that we've actually been presenting these seminars. Uh, content we'll be covering today was how we have managed to COVID-19 proof our income and uh, create a foundation to grow in wealth using the bi bi biblical model of God design that God has designed for us. We've also been able to establish in such a way that 2021 is actually looking, you know, very exciting <clears throat> uh, financially, not just for ourselves but and our communities, but even for the nations. Uh, we're very much nation-minded in, in seeing our nations come back. As, as, you know, just having a chat with Lynn about Melbourne and, you know, the, the, the Melbourne outlook didn't look so good economically, but just being able to see that things are changing and we're not in the recession we thought we'd be and stuff is all part of this stuff sense of uh, being able to um, move forward in what God has shown us rather than what the world shows us. We'll be sharing the seven reasons why God has given us the rights and responsibilities to create wealth. It's from the scriptures. That's a, a question often asked by believers. Um, does God really want me to be rich? We'll share uh, three parts to wealth creation today, including debt reduction, passive income creation, and business development that frees up time and resources to retire at any time. That's quite exciting um, to be able to do, and much more. So. There's a fair bit that we want to cover in two and a half hours. Um, we will have this recording available afterwards. I will send you uh, so that you can relook at it, uh, take notes. But more than that, just kind of let the Holy Spirit speak with you on the potential within you if you've seen that this is important for you this year. A little about our presenters. These are three handsome guys, uh, two of them and myself, and uh, that I've had the privilege of working together with. Um, and uh, just give you a quick introduction to them. Naresh is from the U.S., um, so it's an evening, Friday evening for him. His uh, company is called Naru Tech, and uh, it's just, you know, again, uh, academics are important for you to know that there's a reasonable level of qualification in which we've come from, but at the same time, we've also built it all based around the Word of God. So he's qualified himself in both uh, the U.S. and at, uh, in Australia. I met him when I was about 15, 14 years of age, uh, 13 years of age. Oh, my gosh, it's been a while. Uh, he's been a great friend and mentor and uh, a bit of a, a bully on a good, in, a, in a good way. He's bullied me into kingdom stuff, which is great. Um, I wouldn't be where I am without him. So he's, there's these sayings we say there's someone closer than a brother and um, this is one of them that I can say is the, the, the case. So I highly recommend the stuff that he's teaching. I'm always learning even till today. Um, he's done his master's as well in the U.S. and resides there, but we are hoping to get him back to Melbourne. Uh, well, he says yes to Australia, but Melbourne's another thing. Uh, wealth achievements. Long-term debt has been paid off. He paid off his home in 11 years. He's going to teach us you know, a little bit about that and, and how he's reduced debt. That's brilliant. You know, one way to increase wealth is to reduce your debts. Um, he's imparted that to his two beautiful daughters who graduated with zero debt, just, and this is just recently. His purpose to teach God's people the principle of stewardship, stewarding what God has entrusted to us, to be a blessing to others, and I certainly can say that he's doing that, and channel resources to God's kingdom work. Uh, this is Omar Sharif lookalike. Uh, this is pa Matthew Avada, <laughs> who loves to be called Omar, so feel free to do that. Uh, he thinks he's more handsome. Um, his uh, business is Kingdom Business Network. Some of you are part of that, uh, as I am, and I had the privilege of knowing uh, Matthew for a few years now, and it's been just an amazing journey with him. I love his heart. Some of his academic achievements, he's got a bachelor's in computer science in the UK. He worked there for 12 years in the IT sector. He has had some senior roles in multinationals in Malaysia 
and is an entrepreneur for over 30 years, resides here in Melbourne uh, with me. Wealth achievements, long, no long-term debts, early biblical principles sown into his children ha from young. Um, he sees the fruits of that today. Uh, they've completed university with zero debts. Those are great achievements that are worthwhile and noteworthy. Uh, being an entrepreneur has taught him financial stewardship and wealth creation. His purpose, let me read that to you. It's, so, it's long, but it's great. Um, as a kingdom business coach trainer while conducting entrepreneurship training across Asia, which I know we've traveled together so many years, uh, for the last few years to these countries, discovered that over 70% had very poor financial skills. Absolutely. This led me to establish Kingdom Business Network to teach and equip believers on stewardship, wealth creation, principles, etc. God wants us to have capacity to meet our compassion for others like the Good Samaritan. And I can certainly say I've seen that in Matthew. And one of the awesome things I can say for all the presenters is we only teach you what we have done ourselves. Anything theoretical we'll, we can allude to, but we won't be teaching you to do stuff. So you'll know that whatever we teach is because we've actually walked it, got fruit in it as well. Blessings, uh, blessing those who God wants us to bless from our abundance. And that is really exciting. Matthew and I have talked about the idea of what does it look like to live on 10 to 20% of our income, give 80 to 90% away and still be having more than enough um, to do so much. Myself, um, my business is called Capture Your Purpose. And uh, some of my academic achievements did uh, a robotics uh, engineering degree at Monash and uh, some certs, a master's as well, and uh, some certs in chaplaincy and civil celebrancy. I have realized that I can have as many careers as I want to, especially when you retire. Um, you can just do whatever you need to do whenever you need to do it, which is great. Some wealth achievements, bought my first property before I was 21 years of age, uh, set up over seven businesses without capital, some earning up to 30 to 40,000 per month, uh, retired at the age of 36 into economic independence and create now currently passive and lifestyle based streams of income which frees me up to do the stuff that uh, I've been designed to do. My purpose is to have intimacy with Jesus, to bear fruit in my identity as a son of God and the bride to Christ. Uh, the, the heartbeat for lost souls, the, I often say the value of a soul that none should perish. Um, to disciple the saved into kingdom ambassadors, to display the kingdom of God on earth and in wealth and relationships and health and glorify him in all things. So these are the three presenters, and uh, I'm going to pass it over to Naresh to start. Just raise your hand if you can. Good evening, brothers and sisters. My name is Naresh Arulampalam. And uh, before any other qualification, I am a blood-bought son of Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you about a little model that we use to explain what we are doing. If you are familiar with geometry, you will recognize this. This is called a tetrahedron. It is a three, uh, it is a triangular based pyramid. The interesting thing about a tetrahedron is that it has three vertices at the bottom and one triangular face at the bottom. And it has one vertex at the top with three triangular face, faces that are um, um, more or less vertical to the bottom, right? Then the funny thing about this particular geometry is that it doesn't matter in which direction you turn it, you twist it, you throw it up in the air, you roll it on the ground. It will twist and turn and do all its gyrations. And it will always come to a standstill with three vertices at the bottom, the base, and one vertex right here at the top, right? So we use this to explain what we are doing. The base, one vertex on the base, we talk about increasing residue. And we will define what residue is. For now, just take me at face value, increasing residue, and I cover this section. The next vertex represents investment for grain or wealth creation. And Matthew Avada is, a, is an expert at this. The man is a financial, financial advisor and he's an expert at this. And he will cover this section. The third vertex talks about entrepreneurship. 
this thing of creating something with very little or nothing. And that Ruben is the man. Uh, make builds businesses out of nothing. So he will talk. He will touch on this uh, this uh, section. Now the important thing for you to understand is that we are talking about wealth habits, better wealth habits, better wealth creation mechanisms. Why? Because it's all based on the topmost vertex, divine truth, and everything we teach you comes from the word of God. There is nothing outside God's word that we will tell you. We are, not, we are preaching God's blessings in terms of finances. We are not preaching, quote unquote, the traditional prosperity message. You give me your money and God will bless you 100%. That's not what we're talking about. We are talking about things to cause stewardship, sacrifice, stewardship to abundant supply. And we will, we will touch more on that in our paid courses that are to come later on. But for now, we're going to deal with the fundamentals. So let's start with divine truth first. There are three, four Bible passages that I want to talk to you about. The first one is Matthew 25, 14 to 30. It's a parable of the talents. And just to precede this whole thing, five talents to one person, he made five more, he was given more. Two talents made, from a guy who got two talents and he was rewarded for that. And then there's one guy, the poor guy got one talent and I always felt sorry for this underdog. And I thought that maybe God was being extremely un unreasonable and unfair and discriminating until I read a little line which said, according to each one's ability. So we have some people with a lot of ability and God gives a lot of talents and he expects them to faithfully multiply those talents. There are some with less ability. God understands that, so he gives less. We want our people to learn how to go from the one talent to the two talent to the five talent to the hundred talent and so on and so forth, right? That is the first biblical principle that we want to talk about. Second one is, it is required in stewards that a man and a woman, we are not discriminating here, we're talking about mankind, be found faithful. God gives us certain talents with certain mandates and responsibilities. We are expected to be faithful. The third verse I want to touch on is Luke 16, 10, and Luke 19, 17 is the addendum to that later. He that is faithful in that which is little is faithful in much. So you see, there is this, we always thought that, you know, prosperity was winning the lottery. That's not it. There is a journey here. There's a journey of faithfulness. There's a journey of stewardship. And then there's a journey of developing skills using the talents God has given us using the faithfulness and the stewardship principles to create or procreate or, or multiply wealth, multiply finances to ourselves. This is the divine truth that we are honing on. This, you know, you give to get that, you know, you treat God as some kind of a teller machine. Uh, it doesn't jive, it, it, it doesn't work. So the people you give to are flying around in their private jet aircrafts and you're still giving. So why is God not multiplying? And you will begin to see that when you go through our seminars and our courses, right? So just for this introduction, we want to understand this concept of the true cost of money. How much is a dollar really worth? Define inflows, outflows, and residue for you. I told you I will do that. And I want to stress the need for maximizing residue. So let's dive in. Let me ask the question, is the USA the richest country in the world? It's a rhetorical question. You know, I hear, I hear, the, I hear um, our, our, um, the announcers during the news say, we are the richest nation in the world. And I chuckle to myself and I laugh and I think, ah, really? Okay. The answer is really no. Uh, then let's ask the next question, what are the four richest countries in the world? And if you take a look at them, 
as of August 3rd, 2020, Qatar, Macau, Luxembourg, Singapore, Ireland, Brunei. There are two Middle Eastern countries. There's one Chinese country. There's one Asian country. Actually, Singapore just dropped from three to four. Last year, it was three. And Luxembourg, one European country. Then number six, you have Norway. Where is USA? 11. Where is Australia? 22. Where is Canada? 24. So how can we talk about being the richest country? In the world? How can we talk about being the wealthiest country? In the world? We have a lot of things. But we are not the richest country in the world. I'm, I'm speaking as an American, because I have the right to speak as an American, right? The next thing I want to talk to you about is the true value of a dollar. I just put some numbers here, and these are very conservative, by the way. You know, your federal income tax, if you're upper middle class person, can go up to 22.5%. But instead, I just put an average 15%. State income tax can go up to, in New Jersey, 6.9%. I put 3%. I just took average numbers. Our sales tax here is 6.625%. In places like Tennessee, it's 9.5%, 10%. I think in California, it's, it's 9 or 10%, right? Uh, social security tax, uh, Medicare tax. You add these very conservative, very uh, kind of middle of the road numbers and you come up with 32.275%. So here's the, here's the explanation. For every $1 I earn, the government takes 25.65 cents. That's no sales tax. For every $1 I spend, other than for groceries and clothing in New Jersey, they take another 6.6 .6 cents. So in order for me to spend $1, I have to earn roughly $1.48. So let's round it up and say $1.50. Now, don't think that is different in Australia. I know we, I, I'm an Australian citizen as well. And in Australia, you pay roughly 40% tax if you're on a higher income. So here's the kicker, right? The more I earn, the more tax I pay. And in America, I haven't even started talking about medical insurance, which is free in Australia for you guys. And I once talked about this wonderful tariff war that we've started having, where you know somebody decided to put a tariff on anything, any good that comes from some country. That tariff is paid by the consumer. It is a tariff on the person who uses the product. So what I want you to see is that the dollar you spend means that you have to earn a dollar fifty. Now multiply that by 100 for every hundred dollars you spend, you have to earn 150. For every thousand dollars you spend, you have to earn thousand five hundred dollars. Now do you begin to see the true value of the money that you spend? The more money you make, the more tax you pay. That's how the whole tax system is structured, right? So let me ask you another rhetorical question. Is earning more the answer to our financial health? So let me, I mean, I, I, I got, I mean, every, every, every dollar I spend, I've got to earn a dollar fifty. So let me earn many, many, many dollar fifties, right? Uh, that's a yes and a no answer. The reason is we human beings have a tendency to do things by habit and to do things by mindsets. So we have what is called an enti entitlement mentality. I have worked hard, so I deserve a treat. I'm normally, I, you know, when I was poor, I used to go to McDonald's for a treat. Now I'm making $4 an hour more. I'm going to, you're not going to Hungry Jack's or Burger King as we call it here. You're going to some upmarket place because you like to look good, you want to dress up and it's a, you're treating yourself, right? We have a rights man mentality. It's my money. I can do what I like with it. We have this over-optimistic outlook. In Australia, we say, she'll come right tomorrow, my, um, I'll, I will pay it off with my bonus. I mean, I get my bonus, I'll pay it off, you know? We have flawed values. 
Joe Blow has the Ferrari. So now my job is to buy the Ferrari, but to buy a Ferrari, that's a later model than his. Right? We have cash consuming habits and hobbies and vices. Buying women and song. For those of you who play golf, you understand golf is not a cheap hobby. Right? For those of you who do skydiving, you understand skydiving is not a cheap Scuba diving is not a cheap hobby. Expensive vacations. Oh, there are some people, you know, we must have at least $150 bottle of wine to look good, you know. I'm not saying these are bad things. I'm just saying that these are our trends and our mindsets. Of course, just one more. Let's talk about one more. Uh, uh, retail therapy. Oh, I'm so stressed. So let me go and lower my credit card out of the water. Somehow thinking that we go and we buy something and that makes us feel good and that relieves our stress until the bill comes. And then the stress mounts and then you go buy more to feel good and you do until the bill comes. And this becomes a cycle, right? We spend, most importantly, we have to understand that we indulge more when our incomes increase. So earning more is not the only answer. It is only one part of the answer, right? <laughs> right. Let me talk about some. Let me talk about some uh, facts and figures. Right. Uh, budget projections for the year 2021, as of February 5th. This is pretty recent, right? Uh, America, the U.S. Uh, projected uh, income is 3.86 trillion GDP. Outlay is 4.83 trillion. We're going to spend more than we earn. The deficit is 0.97, close to one trillion dollars. Uncle Sam will spend about 25.13% more than his income. For every single dollar that Uncle Sam earns, Uncle Sam is going to spend $1.25.13. So I'm asking you, are we the richest country in the world? Our, our national debt is uh, roughly... Uh, uh, let me go back. Our national debt is some roughly $27.88 trillion. We're never going to pay the thing off. We are just going to spend and spend and get and get and you're not going to spend. And how do you how do you how do you reconcile these facts? Some more facts, right? Uh, student loan debt amounts to 1.55 trillion. Every student is waiting for Biden to forgive that loan. That will be the biggest mistake any government makes because you're just saying that contracts are not valid. You just undermine the whole premise of contract law. Right? Mortgage debt amounts to $9.86 trillion. They are expecting another housing bubble at the end of this year. You're not talking about auto loans, business loans, personal loans, uh, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Credit card debt. Americans owe a record 416.13 billion in credit card debt. So you see, brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to say is it's not a physical thing. This is a spiritual thing. What is true at a national level is also becoming true at an individual level. What is true at a macroeconomic level is becoming true or is playing itself out in a microeconomic level as well. Because it's the same spirit, right? It's the same spirit. The spirit that influences the, the, the seat of government is the same spirit that influences those that are governed. Because it is through the seat of government that the spirit governs people. So we have to be very careful when we claim we are the richest country in the world. We are not. That's the reality. Having talked to you about some facts, having talked to you about what, uh, what the true value of a dollar is roughly, we said if you spend a dollar, you have to earn a dollar fifty. I want to show you this, this little uh, kind of funny little diagram, you know. What I want to define to you what residue is, right? Inflows are all of the money that you and I will get over the working period of our life, of our lives, roughly 30 to 40 years, 
right? So, you know, you see the tap and all the money coming in. Outflows are all the money that you're going to spend throughout your life, even after you stop earning. Hear me carefully, even after you stop earning because outflows continue. Residue is the money you keep after you have spent and the difference between your inflows and your outflows. Very simple, very simplistically put, but there is a truth to this, right? Let's talk about what are cash inflows? Cash inflows amount to the interest on bank accounts, your salary, your cash gifts, inheritances. When you were young and you, you know, not like me, I'm now old. When you are young, um, you know, when mom gave you $20, here's your allowance, that's an inflow. Your investment income, your inheritance, your business income, your profit from sale of stocks and shares, dividends, these are all inflows. These are all monies that are coming in to your hand, right? So let me ask you a question. What would you do if I gave you a million dollars? Rhetorical question. Some will say I'll buy a house. Some will say I'll do this. Some will say I'll do that. You know, I just did this little spreadsheet to tell you that, you know, for if, example, if you earned just $9 a year, uh, sorry, $9 an hour, and you got a 25 cents per hour pay raise every year, roughly in 36 years, you will have a million bucks. You will earn a million bucks. If on the other hand, you earned $13 an hour, and you never ever got a pay raise, within 40 years, you're going to make a million dollars. So let's be very honest. I mean, in Australia, the minimum wage is more than $9. In America, our minimum wage is now very soon going to $15, right? I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a Biden agenda. We will, all of us here will most likely earn some multiple of a million dollars. It's going to be more than a million. Some of us are going to earn many millions. So then let's ask the next question. Where does all this cash go? And the answer is living. It costs to live. Land of the free and the home of the brave is not free. Uh, this lucky country they call Australia is very lucky, but it doesn't come free. You have to pay for stuff, right? So you have to pay for food, clothing, and shelter. I mean, you know, when, when the temperature in Melbourne goes from summer to winter in like six hours, you can't be in your sleeveless, uh, sleeveless T-shirt and your shorts, right? You've got to have some sweatpants and wind cheaters to wear. Medical expenses. People get sick. Education. Transport. Oh, let's not forget taxes. Please, let's not forget taxes. You know, remember I told you. You are going to pay money for tax, uh, money in taxes, right? Debt. Debt in terms of credit cards, home loans, auto, student loans, so on and so forth. And there is this other aspect of debt that we call debt service and entertainment. So let's talk about debt service for a few minutes. Uh, let me unshare. Can everybody see this uh, see this uh, spreadsheet? Yes, good. So I have a little spreadsheet here that does some calculations for us. Let's just assume that you got a hundred thousand dollar mortgage, right? At three point two five percent interest, thirty years, 12, 12, um, 12 uh, payments a year. Take a look at how much money you pay in interest. You're paying 
$1,674 over the 30 years. Now, I told you that for you to spend a dollar, you have to earn a dollar fifty. Here, when you borrow a dollar, you're paying a dollar fifty-six. Do you see how your liabilities multiply? Now, let's actually make it make life a little easier. Let's say you owe ten thousand dollars in credit card debt. And by the way, credit card debts are twenty-five percent. In America, 24, 25%. Let's say you plan to pay that off in five years. You, you owe 10,000. You are paying $7,610 in interest in five years. So basically, 76% of what you bought, of the amount you borrowed, you have to pay as interest. You see how dangerous this debt game is. You see how dangerous this debt game is, right? So now we come to cash residue. The amount of cash that remains after all cash flows and cash outflows have been accounted for. So basically residue is inflows minus outflows. If residue is a plus number greater than zero, you're doing okay. If the residue is equal to zero, you're an accident waiting to happen. If the residue is less than zero is negative, you're like the American government. You're spending more than you earn. So I'm asking you, how does the American government get away with this? Or, or any, any data government for that matter, that includes Australia, deficit spending, right? How does any government spend more than what they get. How can they do it? And the answer is they have printing presses that produce pieces of paper with some signatures and some numbers on it. And they keep printing that and those printing presses are now running out of spare parts because you know, in order to fund 26, $28 trillion of debt, you've got, you got to print $28 trillion worth of money. So you can understand how they can get away with it. They're actually ruining the value of currency. It's called fiat money for a reason. Fiat means fake, right? Now, what happens if you and I do that? If every time you earn 100, you're spending 100 and 125. Within about a year or two, you'll have to declare bankruptcy. Because the people you owe money to will give you all those nasty calls and call you nasty names and they'll call, they'll threaten to take you to court and they'll harass you at all we are hours in the night and in the morning and they will send people to tap at your door and say, please, can I have my money back? You will be harassed until you either pay or you declare bankruptcy. You know how many people in this country are declaring bankruptcy that should never be in that position. And as far as us Christians are concerned, we must be very careful that we don't get into that position. God forgives. But we need to be good stewards of what God has given us so that we don't get there. Okay? So let's take a look at some facts here. Right? As of December 2019, 69% of respondents had less than 1,000 saved in their bank accounts. Now, this, this fact has changed a little bit. That has reduced to about 33. Uh, it's halved. And you know why that has halved? Because of Corona. Interesting how God gets our attention. Corona comes into play and people can't take their credit cards, swipe their credit cards and go overseas. There are no flights to take you overseas. In Australia, the borders were closed. People in New South Wales couldn't come to Victoria and vice versa. So all that credit card expense has dwindled a bit. But take a look at the facts. I mean, 33.88% uh, as of September 10, 2020 had less than thousand dollars saved. What happens when some calamity of life hits you? See, 
we have a society that has got used to spending tomorrow's income today. We have a society that has got into the habit of doing what their government does, spending money that is not theirs, spending money they don't have. So what we are trying to do with our teaching sessions, with our workshops, with these seminars is to introduce you to these concepts, but more importantly, to start effecting a paradigm shift in your mind and in your heart. You know, a paradigm shift means a total change of philosophy, total change of perspective, total change of perception. See, instead of asking the question, what would I do with a million dollars? We should be asking ourselves, what, what do I do with the dollars God has given me? Or how do I steward well the millions God gives me in my lifetime? We can even add another statement to that. How do I steward well the talents, in this case, the dollars God has given me? So it boils down, brothers and sisters, to a stewardship issue, right? There are people who studied under the street lamp and had nothing and have become millionaires. There are millionaires who have wasted their lives, wasted their wealth, and now they're paupers. So it's not where you start that really matters. It's where you end that matters. It's how you run this amazing journey that we call life that God gives us to prepare us for big things when we get to heaven. Now, remember I told you, residue is inflow minus outflow. And I told you, if residue is plus, if it's a plus number, if it's a positive number, it's a good thing. But we want to take you one step further. We want to tell you that what you see on the left-hand side there, this plus $200, we want you to get to the place where your residue is what you see on the right side. This is the journey of life from a financial standpoint. This is the journey of life from a godly standpoint where finances are concerned. So when you were earning small, you save small. When you're earning big, you save big. Why? because we want to carry all this with us. We're going to line our coffins with dollar, dollar bills and we're going to be buried or we're going to be cremated. No, because that's the only way we are going to have resources to invest in the kingdom of God. Look, brothers and sisters, if we can't pay our bills, if we can't eat, if we can't, if we can't, uh, if we can't live solvent lives, how do you invest in somebody else's life? How do you invest in some other kingdom and you can't get, we can't get our own act together. And so this is the paradigm shift that we are trying to effect with this, with this, um, with our workshops and our seminars. We use this model. I mean, this is my, this is the model I use, but you know, Matthew and, and Ruben's, uh, Ruben's uh, components are included here. We talk uh, first about developing good financial habits from a biblical perspective. And that involves a lot of things and we'll talk about that in our works. We talk about maximizing inflows and maximizing inflows means you've got to invest your money. I mean, you can't, you can't take dollar notes, look at it and expect it to multiply. They're not like amoebas. They're not like rabbits. They don't procreate that way. You have to do something. You have to invest in order to get a return. And then Ruben comes along and talks about entrepreneurship, where you take your, where your money begins to make money for you. Where God gives you an idea, and you know God, God, God takes your creative juices, and you know He squeezes them out, and out comes some great something, something that you created from an entrepreneurial standpoint. So these are three. Remember those three vertices I showed you. This is what we cover. Now, we need to we need to understand. We need to develop good financial habits. We will talk to you about how to increase your residue by eliminating debt 
by paying your obligations and by increase uh, and, and 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 reducing your your indebtedness right we will focus on money on how to manipulate money and how to beat the bank at its own game you know the bank never lifts its finger it never lifts a pen unless it's making money off you you know my stepmother passed away recently i'm looking at her financial numbers and i'm horrified she had a fixed deposit getting 11% interest she takes a loan on that fixed deposit and pays 15% interest she now she's passed away she owes more than she borrowed how did the bank allow that because the bank really doesn't care <laughs> they're going to get your money anyway right if you come for our workshops and you sit through the grueling it's not through our we are going to grill you i mean we are going to give you homework we are going to make you work this is not you know take your take your picnic basket and go and look at the sunset and listen to us you're going to do some work but if you do come i will give you this guarantee you take what we say and you apply it and you will save thousands of dollars of your last seminar we had one of my friends came I talked to him a long time ago about why he should negatively gear. He's gone and negatively geared his property. Is hardly now after five years it has he has had an epiphany. He has come and he said, "Naresh, help me." I looked at his whole thing: one point two five million Australian dollar debt service, and we did the numbers. He can save seventy four. thousand dollars this happened two weeks ago right in october we had a we had an amazing group i mean this was a interesting group these are like real you know a type personality go getters we had people who had five houses in 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 three different countries one excess of 1 million dollar debt cut it down to the point where he will most likely be fine if he if he follows what my instructions he will most likely be debt free in between the next 5 to 7 years in fact one month after we talked he cleared he cleared the, he paid one house off just restructuring just doing some biblical things i don't know whether you are interested in something like that i don't know whether you want to keep more of what you earn and lest anybody feels offended by what i say if you are a person who feels that you are doing very well and if i show you how to save money and you say i don't want that money don't worry i take cash i take checks i will give you my bank account number direct transfer it into my account we have a hundreds and hundreds of people in sri lanka in kenya in nigeria who we are helping who we can channel that money to don't feel bad we will happily accept your contributions do something with your sweat do something with your sacrifice with your stewardship in order to get abundance and surplus into your life supply so that you can bless the kingdom of god i want to stop there and just let you guys tell you guys that um we have a four, we have a four week class it's about 3 hours long and we give each of you a uh, free hour of our time this 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 program per person is normally about 3 3 to 5000 dollars each right for a very very small simple sum of 200 bucks 200 australian bucks we have this consider it there's no pressure think about it see 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 if we can help you and i promise you this i give a guarantee if what i if you do what i say and it doesn't help you Uh, because, because I, I'm so sure that it'll happen. I tell you, we'll return your money, no problem. But come and make a difference in your life, and by making a difference in your life, make a difference in the lives that are around your orbit, the lives that are within your orbit. I can't change the world, but I can change my world. I can change those I touch. So thank you very much. I am 5 minutes ahead of schedule. God bless you. Um 
hold your questions and we will take them at the end of the presentation. And uh, I'm going to take from where, it's a continuity from where Naresh has finished. He talks about how to reduce your debts and uh, maximize your savings. And I'm going to say, what are you going, what can you do with your savings that can give you, create the kind of wealth in a passive environment without even you having to do much work on it. Uh, so that's what most of the wealth billionaires do. And uh, so we can take a leaf from them and, and understand how that can work in our lives. So it's not a matter of whether you, uh, you say, oh, I don't have the money, but it's not about having the money. It's about having the will to start with something. God has already given us something. So what can I do with the seed I have and that God can multiply it for me? So that's a strategy that we need to look at. So don't be discouraged that you don't have, you know, I, I don't have the kind of money. I'm too old. Uh, age does, you know, yes, age, the younger you be, you are, it helps but it's never too late to start. Uh, and that's so, you know, to build this uh, wealth creation habit. So let me share my screen. All right, there we go. Can you all see my screen, Ruben? Awesome. So my first challenge to you, every one of us who are here, is you can be young without money, but you can't be old without it. You know, this was from Tennessee Williams, and uh, it is so true because I'm sure many, many one of us here, you know, when we were young, especially those who are now in our 50s onwards, we, you know, the 50s, the 60s and the 70s were really joyful days, and we used to enjoy life. Uh, but today, the reality is you cannot, you can be without money when you're young. Yes, you can, your parents can help you. You can bum around with friends. But as you get older, you know, nobody's going to look after you except yourself. So it's very, very important to understand this principle that, yes, uh, why God wants us to create wealth. It, is, it also talks about our character because there are more than 2,300 verses in the Bible about money. Jesus spent 15% of his time talking about money. So if it's so important to God, why do they spend that kind of time on the, in the Bible? Heaven doesn't need money because heaven, even the road is made with gold. It's useless. But in heaven, on earth, God knows we need money to live on. And, and so the, the thing is about what Naresh touched earlier, it's about how well do we steward. It's all about stewardship. That's why it got, you know, it's about stewarding how do we steward our wealth and that's what matters that's what makes a person's character that's what jesus and god was talking about so many verses in the bible because it's about a person's character what do you do with what he uh, what he's blessing us with he says you know if we can't trust you with a little he can't trust you with more it's a very simple principle so we need to be good stewards not only in money but in every aspect of our life in our spiritual in our family relationships uh, career, whatever it is, but money is the crux of everything. Money is the one that makes a real turn. So this is why it's so important to understand that we need to build wealth so that we can be in a place where we can uh, be able to do what God wants us to do without even having to worry about our own financial situation. There is no stress, but we're doing everything with peace, joy, and love. Now, this is an example of, uh, I know, Naresh was talking about statistics from US. I'm putting some stats from Australia. Uh, and, you know, for a time, and if you're in US, Australia, I think most of you in Australia know this, uh, you know, in order to live net of taxes, because by the time you come into retirement, you're looking at around 65 in Australia, uh, assuming you have a home already paid for, uh, in order to have a comfortable lifestyle, if you are a, if you're a single, you need about 45,000 US dollars. Today's day, in today's terms, I'm not talking about the future. Uh, and there are a couple you need about $65,000 net. That's the kind of income you need to live a comfortable life. Uh, the government, if you're still purely depending on the government pension, you're not going to get more than about $25,000 a year, twenty-five dollars to $30,000. So you're going to be really living in a, in a, in a spirit of, in a, in a level of poverty. Because, you know, yes, of course, $35,000 if you're living in, in somewhere in Africa or some developing countries, it's a lot of money, but here it is not. So we need to be <clears throat> mindful that we need to be uh, intentional about creating wealth so that when we come to a place where we need to be, uh, to say, yes, I want to now take it easy, 
I want to be living in a financial independence or economic independence. It doesn't matter what age it is. Like Ruben say he's, he's, he, he says he, he achieved the status at 36. You know, he was able to do what he wants, uh, freeing his time to do what he wants because he was able to come to that level. So each of us, we need to set a goal. You know, without a goal, without a plan, we perish. We forget. We, we are not going to hit the target. That's why Gold Corp is very particular about creating vision, creating plans, and submit to him so that he will direct our path. So this just gives an example of what we need to have in today's rate. We're not talking about future in five, ten years time. It's going to be different because you got to have inflation coming in. So your cost of living is going to come. What are you going to pay today for a ten dollar sandwich? In five years, it probably be worth thirteen, fourteen dollars. So you can't, you know, if you're going to keep uh, have an income, interest income uh, on the investment of about three, four percent, you're you're always going to go backwards. So you need to be above the inflation rate, above the fees that you have, whatever investment you're investing into, and and as Marish said, plus whatever you're paying off in taxes. So you need to be mindful of those things. So to me, wealth is like an ATM. Uh, there are two terms of ATMs I'm going to talk about now. I'm talking about the ATM that you have, everybody is familiar with. It's where we, you know, we go to a bank, we just uh, put a card in, we get the money out, wow, like magic. But don't forget, it's your money, it's not bank's money. You have put it there and they're just merely custodians of your money. But again, this wealth creation is, is that's what wealth creation is. Wealth creation is where... You, can, you should be able to draw money whenever you want, have the money whenever from the wealth that you have created. If you don't have a wealth creating plan, if you don't have wealth or assets, there is no money available to you from the ATM. The bank doesn't give you, you don't have it, and you got to make do with whatever you live on. So, so you need to be, have that kind of a, a asset built up over time to be able to, and that asset is building up in, you know, in, the, in the sense that it is making more money than what you're spending. So I'll, I'll put a slide out later to talk about how to do capital preservation so that even if you're living for 100 years, whatever you have, you're not going to touch the capital, but you're going to live off the profits. So that's the kind of strategy that we need to work on. So what we're saying is that it is all through good stewardship, which I, I'm not going to talk about that because I think uh, uh, Naresh has already spent a lot of time on it. Now, what Naresh some spoke about, about inflow outflow and residue is exactly this is what we will be teaching and if we jump into our training program about how to maximize your inflow how to minimize your outflow and how you invest into your savings and investing that is the difference between savings and investing and again we will cover that in, in, in detail during those training as so so these are what we will be covering this is a strategy how you're going to create wealth right so it's about, again, uh, reducing expenses, increasing your savings, and growing for over time. So what is the biggest risk that we have as per people? You know, if you want to create wealth, what is the biggest risk you have? You can probably write it down in, your, in the chat box if you want. Okay. Now, the biggest risk is not investing at all. If you don't invest, then how are you going to get a wealth creation? How are you going to multiply what God is giving you? Because God's principle is multiplication 30, 60, 100, 4. He's not an addition. He's not talking about plus 10% or 5%. He's talking about 30, 60, 100, 4. So our strategy should be always be how do we turn our one a dollar we have into $30, $60, or $100 over time? That's the strategy we need to be looking. That's why we're going to teach you in the training. So not having the, you know, what some of the reasons why many, you know, as I said you know, earlier during Ruben's introduction, he said, I found 70% of the people I was training had no financial skills. The reason is because we don't blame them because some of our, even our parents didn't, most of our parents didn't have any clue about financial management or wealth creation. So our set of beliefs when we're growing up uh, was influenced by where we are today. So most of, you know, most of our beliefs have been fear-based about money. Yeah, especially as Christians, we think, oh, having money is evil. That was a wrong teaching by the church. The right? Bible never talks about living in poverty. It talks about living in abundance so that you can be a blessing to the others. So influencers like parents, friends, teachers, schools never taught us about wealth creation. So these are some, you know, from childhood, the media never talks about it. So we've been ignorant. Many of us have been ignorant about wealth creation. 
and I'm included because I, I come from a pair. My parents were laborers in a rubber plantation in Malaysia. Right? They had no clue about wealth creation. So I had to, by accident, when I went into business, uh, into then I realized uh, what wealth creation is all about. So that's how I learned my uh, uh, habits about wealth creation, which I was able to uh, my my late wife might be able to sow into my children's lives. And today I'm very proud of that. I'm very, very proud of my, my children because they have taken on, on board what we have taught them and they're doing exceptionally well. And that gives me a lot of peace and joy. So this is what, so it's also as a parent, we have a responsibility in educating our children about wealth creation early. But the problem is if we don't have that knowledge, how are we going to, you know, how are we going to pass it across? So that's why the earlier you start wealth creation habits, the better it is. Right, failure, power, failure, failure. You always think, oh, what if I lose my money? Again, there's no, no, if you don't invest, you're not going to make again. There's always risk. Every investment has got a risk. It's about making wealth creation, is not about worrying about creating wealth. It is about risk management. How do I manage the risk around where I'm investing so that I mitigate, I'm minimizing the risk? You will have some risk. You will have some areas of investment where you may lose money. I have done that, it's happened to me, but that's part of the learning curve. That is why we need to say we diversify, how do we diversify investment so that if one area, one, one investment fails, you're not affected so the others can get, you know, make it up for the losses. Ignorance of opportunity, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of opportunities out there to create wealth. Most of us leave it into the hands of our, you know, especially in Australia, to our, well, our super funds. <laughs> they think they're the rocket science. They're the people who got, the, you know, the wisdom to create wealth and, and financial planners. It's wrong because they are just human beings. And you must understand super funds and financial plan, they're earning salaries. They, you know, they're looking after their own pockets first before they give you something. So you need to take responsibility. You need to take accountability for your finances. And then you will start doing much better than what you're going to achieve from those other investments where you have no control over. You need to take control. So wealth mindset is a habit that needs to be developed over time. You, should, you need to change your identity, your mindset, because most Christians still believe, you know, behave like slaves or servants, uh, love and entitlement, complaining, whereas God says we are his children. So once you understand your identity as children and sons of God and daughters of God, you will start changing your mindset. So you need to change your mindset. And one of the things I teach is uh, repetition creates mastery. So you need to start learning little by little. Every time you learn a little bit, you create mastery. You can become better and better and better. So it, you've got to get into a habit of uh, under learning and, and over time you become a master at whatever you're doing. Uh, your priority is important to make sure that what is your priority because you can't say I'm going to spend what I have and what I have left is left over is what I'm going to save. That is not right. It should be the other way around. You should, what can I put aside first and then I live on the rest so that you are in a position to have a better wealth creation habit. Uh, outcome will be obviously expendable so you grow your capacity uh, as you steward your finances well and obviously uh, you, God will trust you more. God will now bless you more because you are becoming a good steward of what he's putting into your hands. Everything is biblical based because God wants us to be wealthy on this earth. That is why he's put all the resources on this earth for us to do something with it. But if we are irresponsible, then we are not going to be, you know, nobody can be, we can't blame anybody but ourselves. So there are six money-making mistakes to avoid. Number one, Buying expensive things that you cannot afford. Don't buy things, expensive things that you cannot afford. For example, if you're an employee, you're not a business owner, why do you need to buy a brand new car? You buy a brand new car, the moment you get your keys, the moment you drive up, you're losing 15% of your value of the car. Rather buy a three-year-old car, which is equally good, and you save the balance, and you can invest that money or pay off your debts, whatever you have. Again, don't, you know, I know people who go and buy mobile phones every year. Why do you need to buy mobile phones every year when it costs you two, three thousand dollars? Don't invest too much on depreciating assets. Invest more on appreciating assets. And again, within budget, what you can afford, not to show off to your neighbors, but be humble and let please God, not please men. 
right? Lay, living paycheck to paycheck. Again, we've seen this uh, happening in, in last year. <clears throat> when COVID hit uh, uh, in May, February, I, I very clearly remember in February, God sort of put into my heart. He said, you know, the, he told me about the parable of the 10 virgins. He said, Matthew, just watch. Five are prepared, five are not prepared for these situations. And true enough, many, many were caught off guard. They didn't have enough savings. They lost their jobs. They had to go to Centrelink. Uh, you know, uh, that is fine if you're in a country where you have that kind of uh, unemployment benefits. But what about countries where you don't have such, such benefits? What do you do? So you don't leave paycheck to check. You must live off the abundance. Uh, and I'm going to give you some ideas later on as well, how to manage that. Not having monthly monetary budget. If you don't have a plan of how much you need to spend and how, from the income you're getting, you will lose control very quickly. So you must have a monthly budget. What do I spend? How, and then check it against your budget to make sure that you're, you are within the budget and you're saving maximum, maximizing your savings. I have a budget myself. I have an Excel sheet every day. What you know, if whenever I go to I spend something, I each day, each day I just update my spreadsheet and end of each month I tally to make sure I'm in within. Uh, the budget it, be, it becomes a good discipline maintaining a spending habit you know that's another big big dangerous thing don't get into a habit especially women uh, ladies i know is you know i'm not going to, you know that what i'm saying uh, don't have to buy 20 pair of shoes when you can when you're not even going to wear some of them for the, after once right be practical be practical uh, so that you know, yes, you got, we need to look good, we need to look presentable, but what I'm saying is that don't invest on things that you're not going to utilize. Uh, and then six months later, you open the wardrobe, you say, oh, I didn't know I had this clothes, this clothes, this clothes. Okay. So, so we don't want that kind of situation. So maintain, minimize your spending habit, be disciplined. Right. And again, uh, abusing credit card facilities. Again, Nalish talked about very briefly. In Australia, we pay about 20% of credit cards. And I know there are people on Australia who buy, who go on holidays using credit cards and then they spend the rest of the year paying off the debts. That's not God's plan. Don't be a, you know, a land borrower uh, and you're going to be on, in bondage. But you'd rather be a God's plan is we need to be lenders, not borrowers. And not having a financial plan. This is where we will be talking to you over these four weeks if you join us, teach you how to plan a wealth creation plan over five years, 10 years, 15 years, or whatever you, time frame that you have set where you want to accomplish certain goals. So you need to have a plan. That's why book of Habakkuk talks about, God talks about we need to have a plan, create a write down a plan and submit to him and he will guide our paths. So these are some of the mistakes that people do. We just want to you know, help you to avoid it. And you know there are set different types of income where you create wealth. Uh, number one is earned income. We all know salaries or from your business. Uh, profit income, where you get from investments, from you know by selling investments or shares or whatever, you get profit income. You got interest incomes, for example, if you're putting your parking your money in bonds or bank uh, savings or whatever, you get interest on it. Uh, dividend incomes again from investments you make, uh, you get uh, from share market or whatsoever. Uh, rental income, if you're owning a properties where you're renting out, whether it's commercial or residential, you get in, rental income from those things. Uh, capital gains income, when you've sold any of your assets, uh, where you get, gain some profits. Uh, and finally, royalty income, royalty income, where you, you, you're either writing a book, uh, it, you know, it's giving, going to give you a passive income, or you're putting together some trading materials, where it's a create ones and it produces income. Uh, for over a period of time. So these are some of the ways that we need to, you know, we, we, we derive income. Uh, and so what we're saying is that, you know, again, this is how you need to diversify your income so that you don't lose. Uh, if one affected, then you're not affected by the other. I'm not saying everybody's going to be an author. I'm not saying you must invest in all these seven areas to be wealthy. No, these are the seven streams that are commonly are used as vehicles for creating wealth. And this is what most of the wealthy billionaires and billionaires are involved in. So just give you an idea, just to digest these, uh, and we will you know, address these things as we go down in the, further down in the four weeks training. Now, the key, the key, the master key for wealth creation 
is compounding, the power of compounding. I want you to pay attention to the next three slides. Okay. Now, compounding, according to Einstein, compounding is the eighth wonder of the world. Every wealth creation is, can only be accomplished through compounding and no other way. Unless you're getting an inheritance from, from a rich uncle or rich auntie or your parents. That's, that's, I don't classify that as compounding. That's uh, something falling into your, on your lap uh, out of the blue. Okay, So that is not because that is not what I call wealth creation. So wealth creation can only be accomplished over time and by compounding. So it's all about wealth creation takes time. It's not going to be overnight. The minimum period is seven years before you can see the results of your investment or what you've sown. So it's a, it needs, it's a game of patience. It's a game of perseverance. And I always say wealth creation is boring. It's a boring activity, but it is essential. But you need to be disciplined, you need to persevere to make sure that you don't keep chopping and changing your strategies just because somebody told you something is going to, you know, it's, uh, it's going to make money for you quickly. So you need to be very, very disciplined about our creation. Compounding is reinvesting profits back into the investment to achieve massive growth over time. I like to stress the word over time. Initially, it doesn't look much, much, much different. But over time, it starts escalating. It really escalates uh, exponentially. Uh, and I'm going to give you some examples there. Right? This is an example. Uh, you know, this is an example where you're only investing $1,000 once. Only once. You're not adding any more to this, in, to this particular investment. And let's say your initial investment is $1,000. And you're getting a return of 30%. You say, wow, Matthew, 30% is very high. I'm telling you it is not because we have investments where we're getting more than 30% a year, right? So that's why I said there are hundreds and hundreds of opportunities out there. It's a matter of you going to look out, see what's available, identify the risk. And then if you invest in those things, you get better return with, at a lower risk, manage, risk level. So it's about risk level management. So again, here, let's say we get 30% return. And so the first year you get 1,300, you reinvest at $300. It becomes one, you know, uh, three. So three, uh, one thousand three becomes three hundred. It gives you an extra three hundred ninety dollars, which then becomes one thousand six hundred dollars. So in ten years, that same one thousand dollar becomes thirteen thousand seven hundred odd dollars. All right. Now let's take it a bit further. Now let's look at it in instead of a twenty years, that same one dollar has become one hundred eighty-nine thousand. As I said, initially. It takes a bit of a slow, it is slow, but as it goes on, it, it, it grows exponentially. So the same $1 now in 30 years, if you constantly reinvest it, is becoming $2.6 million. Now, tell me here, anybody who say that, why can't you do that? Right? Do you, do you say, I don't have money now? This gives you an example. It's not about having thousands of dollars to start, it's what you have, even if you're $100, $200 in your hand, what can I do to invest, to compound it over time and, and, and make it uh, exponentially uh, grow? So that's the strategy. That's what it's all about. Wealth creation is all about how do you compound it? What are the return on investment I'm looking for? And over what time? And what is the goal that I have? And again, I'm not talking about investing in one particular product. Area again, there are six, seven areas we'll teach you where you can invest, whether it's stocks, shares, bonds, or whether it's in real estate or whatever. There are different ways to invest and spread your investments over so that you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Now, I'll give you another example here. This is I'm giving you three different scenarios. I, you know, assuming you're, you're getting a return of 15% or 20% or, and 30%. And you're using the initial capital of $10,000. And then you're adding $2,000 every year in principle. You just add 10,000. So the total investment is $50,000. Each of these scenarios, your total investment over 20 years is $50,000. So you started with $10,000 first year. And then you add $2,000 to the capital, to the in, to what you to add to that particular investment. So in 21 years, if you're getting 15% return, you are going to get 
right? If it's 20%, it becomes 800, 802 dollars. If it is 30%, your return is $33.1 million. It's the same $50,000. So it's about how savvy are you in looking for opportunities where it's going to give you a better return. Now, do you want to leave your investment in the hands of people like super fund managers or your financial planner, or you want to take control? Right? Every one of us have the ability to be able to do these things. It's just because we thought it's too difficult. I started this again. I find, as I said, I only got into this understanding when I became an entrepreneur. And, and it, I've learned over, over time. I've mastered it. I've refined it. And I am glad to tell you today, you know, I am, uh, I want to show you the next screen. This is where I am now, right? So, for example, when you say I want to retire at 55 or 60 years old, Right. How do I protect what I have now and I don't use that money, but I live off the profit in a very comfortable lifestyle? So let's look at it. If let's say you have $500,000 worth of assets, it could be in real estate, in shares, bonds, whatever it is. And I spread the investment across different uh, investments. Some will give me 7%, some will give me 10%, some will give me 15%, some will give me 20%. On average, it gives me a 13% return. So for $500,000, I will get an income of $65,000 every year without touching my capital. So if I'm 50, I can still live for 80, 90 years old, and I know that my capital is preserved and I'm, I'm going to be living comfortably for my income. And I can constantly review this to see what where I need to change. And don't forget, you know, you need to put, because you need to hedge against inflation and fees that you're incurring in those investments. So let's say inflation is about 2% and fees you're paying is about 3%. So minimum of 5% of the profit reinvest into your capital so that your capital is always keeping in line with inflation, keeping in line with cost of living index so that this doesn't depreciate. This doesn't go backwards. So let's say if you have $1 million assets, so you should be getting $130,000 a year. Hey, tax-free, right? In Australia, that's a very exceedingly comfortable lifestyle to live on $10,000 a month tax-free, right, when you're retiring. So the goal is how do I get build up my assets to the point where when I am now in a position to, you know, you can say like Ruben said, I he retired as, you know, economic 36. I know he's still, you know, but he's still doing some business as he go along. But what I'm saying is that if let's assuming you're 50 and you say, oh, I've already got $800,000 and, you know, I can now retire. I can get $404,000. I can spend time doing what I enjoy. I can go for holidays. I can go sailing. I can go fishing. I can go ministry whatsoever. Now, you are in control. You are in control. And that's what is important. You need to understand that it is in your hands. God has given each one of us the opportunity to be able to create wealth. And if you don't know how to do it, this is where you come to our training. We can help you. You know, today I'm going to be, I'm going to be 70 this year. I, I, don't, I don't feel 70. I feel like more like a 50-year-old guy. I'm excited, I'm healthy, I'm enjoying life, right? And this is my strategy. I, I am absolutely relaxed. And before COVID, Ruben, myself, and a couple of others, you know, we used to travel four, five, six, seven nations a year, preaching the gospel, training business people, doing seminars and conferences. We never asked a single cent from anybody because we were able to cover our own expenses from the lifestyle that we have, right? So even if I got to live until 100 years old, if that's what God wants me to do, because in God's kingdom, there's no retirement, right? The Bible never talks about retirement. He just gives you a new assignment. So you put new wheels on and, and run, right? So I'm happy. I'm looking forward to, even if he wants me to live on a 30, I'm not fussed about my finances. I am not saying I'm a billionaire or a millionaire. What I'm saying is I have economic independence. That means I have enough finances. I've enough invested in the right places that I keep on. You know, I, I must, of course, every month I track my investments. 
I make sure that I'm up ahead so that I'm always in the positive area and I'm getting enough income, more than what I need, so I can be generous in blessing others. So through like Ruben, myself, uh, Naresh, we also, you know, most of this, like we charge, if we pay the $200, we're not even taking the money for ourselves. It's going to ministry, right? We're not taking the money. We don't need your $200, right? $200 is nothing for us to spend, you know, for eight, 10 hours with you guys, right? But what we're saying is that this is the what God wants us to be, to have the capacity uh, to be able to do the whatever compassion God puts in our, whatever plan God puts in our life to fulfill his mission and to have this be good steward so that our family is taken care. They're living in a very comfortable life. At the same time, we are in a position to bless as many people as God wants us to. So this is, you know, the ultimate result. This is where we need to be. I hope this makes sense to you guys. Right? So we will help you to structure where you need to be based on what you have. Don't worry about what I have now. Just look at what you can have. Because God always works from back to end, front. You need to know the end in order to, and come to the beginning and work towards achieving the accomplish what you need to accomplish. Right? So there are eight areas you need to be uh, take action right away. Number one, pay yourself first. Start a habit of saving. That means don't say, I will save on what I have. It's the other way around. Save, put aside, say, I'm going to save 15% of my income straight into savings and I'm going to leave on the rest. So you've got to create that habit, culture and habit of saving first and spending on the balance, living on the balance. Manage your expenses by readjusting life. Every dollar you save by readjusting your lifestyle, that is going to go into creating wealth, into compounding, into multiplication. I'm not saying you live in poverty. You can still live a very comfortable lifestyle by saving more and spending less. Build three to six months emergency fund. You know, as I said again earlier, many majority don't have enough money even to live for a, a month. Even in Australia, based on the statistics that Naresh put, that's not nothing. It's the same. Over 50, 60 percent of people in Australia don't have even ten thousand dollars in savings. So you need to put aside at least three to six months of your enough money, monthly expenses, so that's available to you. So if whatever happens to you. You are in a position to, you're not panicking, you're not going to be freaking out. You say, okay, I've got time to think about what's happening and I know what to do. Reduce debts fast. So the more you reduce the debts, the faster you can save. Like mortgage, uh, what uh, Naresh said, if you've got a 30 year mortgage, if you can pay off in 15 years, you're going to save thousands and thousands of dollars uh, from, your, from your interest, which you can put into investments. <laughs> invest periodically with long-term mindset mentality. Again, as I said, invest wealth creation is minimum of seven years and, and beyond. So don't look for short-term gains, uh, thinking that I come up with a business idea and tomorrow somebody will you know, invest into me and I'm going to be a billionaire in one year. It works probably in you know, one out of probably hundreds of millions of people. That's what happens. Now, invest in passive income to acceptable return on investment. Why passive? Because you, you know, each of us, time is a precious commodity. It's limited for us. Let's say if you're one hour, if you're working and you're earning $100 at one hour, you should be able to have investments at that same one hour is also producing for you other incomes without you being working on it. So that's why we're talking about passive. So that means you have multiple streams of income, even if you're in that one hour, even though you might be physically working in that one hour to earn an income. Beware of negative impact of inflation. I talked about it. Inflation is a, is a silent care, you know, destruction. So you need to keep abreast of whatever in investments you do must be a keep abreast of inflation and any fees because most of the invest wealth fund companies, super fund, wherever you invest, don't forget they're eating into your money. You know, if they make $100 for you, they're taking away 5 to $10 in fees. So that is so, and that is lost to you. Because if that five to ten dollars, if you had in control, you could have reinvested. You would have given you more income. <clears throat> so don't think they're doing it for a charity. They're doing it because they are in a profit organization. They need to make money. They need to pay salaries. So they will take fees, whether you're doing well or not. It's not their responsibility. 
Start now and let time do the compounding effects so or plan backwards. If I say I want to have so much uh, in 15 years, okay, now well, what do I have now in my hands? What do I need to do? What sort of return on investment, average return on investment I need over this time to be able to keep compounding it to hit my goal and review it periodically and learn to be learn become masters of where you're investing, understand the investment market, understand what you're investing in so that you're not caught off guard. So don't focus, I always say, don't focus on the money, but focus on the mission. Focus on the mission, not on the money. Because when you keep your eyes on the money, you will get sidetracked, you get fear. But if you focus on the mission, you know it's a 10 year plan, 15 year plan, you can keep adjusting it accordingly. So finally, time, as I said, time is your enemy. I talked about ATM that dispenses cash. Here I'm talking about anti-time machine. The only working life is about 40 years for a typical human being. So the earlier you start, the better. The longer you wait, time is against you to make the kind of income that you need once you retire. Historically, nowadays, banks are giving you lower and lower return on interest. On your investments, some of the countries are even negative. If you put your money, they charge you for it. So that's not how you create wealth. So wealth creation is outside of banks, outside of uh, you know traditional uh, investments that our parents have talked or told us about. Uh, put the money in the bank and so on. It doesn't work anymore. You have to be very creative now. Right? Wage increase is lower than inflation. Typically, you know, even in Australia, if you get 3% increase, that's considered good. But don't forget every year your electricity bill, your utility bill goes up by 5 to 7%. Right? Everything goes is increasing beyond what you're earning as an employee. So you cannot live on salary alone. You've got to look at multiple streams of investment that will give you the kind of return that will give you a positive cash flow throughout your life. So how? Harness the power of compounding, inflation beating gains for the long term, right? And the longer you wait, the more you need to put aside. Again, these are some things we'll teach you again, uh, why it's very, very important to be uh, start as early as possible uh, and uh, not wait too long. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow will never come. God says, do what you can do today because tomorrow has its own problems. Right, so you cannot push this matter away because you say oh, it was too late, I can't do much. No, it's never too late. So, finally, everything is based on compounding and what sort of return on you, what return on investment you want to hit your goal and your target. So, the formula is time, time is of essence, increasing and compounding your capital to be able to get your critical mass. That's the formula that works. Key success factor, as I said earlier, is patience, consistency, and staying focused. As I said, investing is boring. Wealth creation is boring. But man, when you hit your goal, it is fun to spend, use the money, right? It is, you got such a peace of mind that you get up in the morning, you can do what you want in the day without having to worry about what, where, you know, where do I get my income from? That's not God's plan. God wants us to enjoy our life, worshiping him, celebrating. Because one of the things I teach in my kingdom business method is the purpose of wealth. God wants us to have wealth so that we have the freedom to worship him through our time, talents, and treasures. That's what God wants us to do. Freedom to worship him with our time, our talents, and our treasures. That's why God wants to give us finance. That's why God's on the wealth. So don't give up this opportunity to have the freedom to be able to enjoy what God gives you and to be a blessing and to your family, to whoever God wants you to bless. So and build mastery over time. You know, we need to be masters of what we're doing. We don't blindly put money where we nobody, just because somebody told us to do something. So that's my presentation. And uh, thank you guys for your patience. And uh, I think question time, we will hold it back for a while. Uh, let me just push that away. Hope that's been helpful. I know there's a lot of stuff being given there, but uh, 
just to let you know, it's like, you know, wealth creation is fun, it's exciting. Uh, you know, I, we run uh, other seminars as well or different investment types. All this, why? Because we have learned uh, through experience. You know, it was not, nobody in the world got put straight away, is born as a, with, with, to be well, is, uh, with the, you know, with billions of dollars. You know, it's basically, it's a journey. We go, it, it's something that we create, we develop over time. So thank you guys. God bless you. And uh, questions we'll take later after Ruben's presentation. Thank you. Wonderful. So um, just to uh, reiterate that this is what we want to cover today. We've covered some of the uh, some of the stuff, um, both Narish and Matthew have covered it so well. And I'm going to be covering the last bit. Um, I want to ask you a question. And for those who know me, when I do presentations, I like it to be interactive. So you'll be a bit your fingers are going to be hopefully working a little bit in your brains to answer some questions. And I, I want to ask this question that's showing up on the left. Um, how many of you would like to retire on your terms and create the lifestyle you want to live? The way that you were purposed and designed for. Yeah, I got a few, you know, saying yes. And, and maybe you could put a yes in the, in, in, a Y in the chat box as well. Because one of the things I've realized is spiritually when we make decisions um, and we start to speak those out, um, they actually start to happen. I wanted to retire when I was 30 um, through financial freedom. Um, and uh, it didn't happen that way. In fact, I got hit by uh, a something that hit me that I didn't expect happening, and it was in the form of a divorce after I had five children and, and uh, thought I was established well in business, and I was in minus $200,000 of debt at the age of 36 of age, and at that time, God said, now it's time to retire. And I went, that's impossible. And he showed me how to retire into what we call economic independence, and then from that, I started creating the lifestyle I wanted to the place where today I can say the key to financial freedom is economic independence. Those terminologies might mean nothing to you. Economic independence is a coined term that you won't hear much everywhere else. In fact, it was a conversation I had with Naresh over a decade ago when he just threw that term. He, he's even forgotten about it when I asked him if he remembers it. And he said, I said, the Holy Spirit just grabbed, pushed it into me. And he said, that's, that's what I want you to do. That's the key to financial freedom and most believers miss that so I'm getting you know, I'm getting a few yeses so I think you guys are on the right track with us and we're on the right track with giving you stuff because this creates it on our terms and when I say our terms it's not that we're proud we're confident in the way God designed us God didn't design you to toil he designed you to tend the garden not toil the soil and yes when we when when sin came in we were thrown out of the garden but Jesus came and restored us and we have forgotten to live under the restoration, which includes wealth. So I want to just cover uh, an aspect that people often ask, and it's needed to be covered. Uh, seven rights and responsibilities to create wealth. What does the Bible say about it? Um, I am a person who loves reading um, and was a person who would read about five books simultaneously, mainly on, on uh, you know, self, um, self-improvement. Um, what you know, I love reading the Bible. I love reading things about the Bible. I love reading on millionaires, billionaires, studying their habits. I love reading about health, relationships, family, all those things. And one day, my uh, bookshelf fell down. I was a book addict, and uh, I remember running to the bookshelf and and God speaking to me and saying, "Get back to the Bible, and I'll teach you everything from there." And so. Everything we do, I, I often ask, and those who hang around me know that I'll, if I'm learning a new truth, I'll always say, where's that in the Bible? Because if it's in God's word and it's, it's established well, then I know it, I can't lose. It's what I call the Melchizedek touch, better than the Midas touch. Everything you touched is blessed. So he, this might help you a little bit if you're answering the question, if others are saying to you, oh, be careful about creating wealth and all of that sort of thing and being rich. And so here's some, so here's some things that, uh, you know, be noteworthy for you. I've done the homework for you. Um, something I needed to, to make sure of before I went down this avenue because I was furthest away from wanting to create wealth. I was just more interested in going preaching the, the gospel of good news, seeing people healed and set free and, and all of those things. And so this was a, a challenge to me. But it actually says it's your God-given right and responsibility to create wealth. Not just your right, but a responsibility as well. And that's pretty cool. It's actually a royal right and responsibility. Deuteronomy 8.18, we've alluded to this scripture a few times. 
Remember the Lord your God, it is he that gives you the power to create well, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers. That covenant is actually to reconcile man to God. I want you to understand that no one wants to reflect a, a poverty-minded God. Amen? And he wants us to reflect himself, and he is not poor. He's rich in all things. As Narish would often say, um, the way that God sees gold is that he walks on it in heaven. That's how valueless gold is in heaven, but it's so valuable to us on earth. But that's how God says it's not about the physical finances. And I'll show you why in a, in a moment that stewarding it well is a test. How do we steward well wealth so God can give us more and trust us with more of things of heaven? It is your God-given right and responsibility to live debt-free. One of the reasons I got out of debt, I, I climbed my way out of minus $200,000 in debt. And, and, and it wasn't through my efforts. It was through God's efforts that he showed me in wisdom to do. And I didn't think it was ever possible to get out of the stuff that I got, that I got into. And, that, and I, was, I thought myself as a very responsible person, but when I got hit by a divorce and got hit by something that I didn't see coming and I got hit by debts and I got hit by everything being taken away from me, um, it was pretty tough. But then I relied on the scripture, Romans 13, 8, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. I remember one of the big debts that got canceled was a, was a tax debt. And for those in Australia, they know that the ATO, the Australian Tax Office, does not forgive debts. And it was a $50,000 debt that grew to $60,000 over the 12 months. And I could not afford to pay it back. I had nothing. I put the money aside to pay that tax. And then it got all taken away from me. And, you know, that might have happened to you in your life. You might have had circumstances in your life where you were trying to be responsible for things and things didn't happen. Um, and, and, but God knew it from the beginning. I remember being in the shower one day crying to God and saying, do you not understand what I'm going through? And he said, when did I know about the situation? And, and I went, I guess, from the beginning of time. He said, yes, before you were born, before even the foundations of the world were created, I knew where you're going to be. So I've had all eternity to produce a solution, and that solution is Jesus. Wow, changed my whole. I mean, that's it, done. And, and, and suddenly this confidence returned in me that even in my mess-ups, whether my fault or not, and taking responsibility for the ones that are my fault, um, he still has a way out. Well, I'd like to tell you that after 12 months with this particular debt from the ATU, I got a letter from them saying, we've canceled your debt. Never seen anyone have a, a letter from an ATU canceling $60,000 of debt. And, and that's how progressively $200,000 have been either paid for, canceled, had the money to pay it back. You know, I'm not, I don't run away from debts. I run towards it with the word. And I want to encourage you to do the same. Number three, it is your God-given right and responsibility to not be poor. You know, Deuteronomy 15.4 says there should be no poor among you. Look, you can join the family of God poor, but you can't remain poor. And, the, and, and people say, well, what about when Jesus said there'll always be the poor among you? Well, he was not talking about the family of God. He was saying in the world, there'll always be poor and we help the poor. We said that we've alluded to the, you know, uh, and, and talked about these workshops. That we're going to have a four week workshop. If you're serious about making a difference in your, in your financial world this year and the years to come, it's worth investing in, but that money is actually going towards Project 61 and the stuff that we do then. It's an excitement to be able to help others and, and see change in the way we do things. Number four, there's seven steps that I've seen in the scriptures as to why God has given us a right and responsibility to create wealth. To lend and not borrow. Matthew spoke about this e earlier. The Bible says we will be lenders and not borrowers. It's been exciting that we started Project 61 Oh, a few years ago, six, seven years ago, and, and you know, was produced mainly out of the income that I had and, and Papa Luke, who was one of our implementers, uh, who is one of our implementers that, that started this out. And we just had a heart when we traveled to nations. And don't forget, like oh, 10 years ago, I had nothing. I'd lost over $200,000. And it's then when God said, it's time, you know, and, and, and I w went to nations and I still don't know how it got covered, the cost. But you learn from faith steps and then you move into today where, you know, we have the ability to travel and money is not an issue. Um, but it's so exciting to start to lend to others and uh, not just give handouts. We, we don't give handouts to nations, including Australia, where people are in, help, uh, in need. We help them and we give a two to five year plan where they can become reliant on God and self-sufficient. How good is that? And we're starting to see the fruit of that, you know, because why? If it's good enough for me, it should be good enough for someone else. And the Word of God works no matter what location you're in geographically. 
Number five, and this is what something I spoke earlier and said, it's, it's a test. Wealth is a test. Because Luke 16, 9 says that we need to be good stewards. It says if you're faithful in the little, then you can be faithful in, in the things of heaven. If you're untrustworthy with worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? So when you try to run away from money, and, and I hear a lot of Christians, a lot of ministers, a lot of pastors, and by the way, the three of us are pastors as well in the church, and the titles are not important, but we do tell you that because we want you to know that we're not afraid to teach this stuff. We don't ask for tithes in our church. We do the opposite. We teach people um, how to produce income um, because I've written a book on this uh, called Better Than the Tithes, and the fact that it's no longer required to tithe, we need to give. And if God gave himself 100%, how dare we give 10% and think that's okay? It doesn't work that way. And whatever you've been taught, apart from that, I will. there is no one who can, uh, who can come against the scriptural backing that I have in the book that talk, explains it, plus the fact that I haven't died for over 15 years and I'm, uh, you know, I'm not under a curse. I must have been under God's, uh, under, either gone under God's radar or I'm God's beloved. I think I'm God's beloved, but there's a promise there for all of us. Amen. And I know that might hit you between the eyes, but this is what this information session is about. It's learning to change things. Money, creating wealth and stewarding it well is a test. How well are you going to do in, on that? It's your God-given right and responsibility to help the widows, orphans, fatherless and the needy. James 1.27 says that is what pure religion and pure and genuine religion is. And, and so, you know, we don't tick boxes by giving charity. One of the things I tell people in Australia is the worst thing we can do in the, third world, in the first world and in, de in, in, in first world countries is to tick a box of I've given to charity. Be involved with the people you give. See them change as well. And you can't give away what you don't have. And, and, and if you're poor, you can't give away. And, and Matthew often talks about when you're in the workshops, you'll hear him talk about the Good Samaritan. I mean, the, the priest and the Levite couldn't help, but the Good Samaritan could because he had money. Didn't take him home, took him to a hotel. Look after this man. And whatever you need, I'll give it to you even afterwards. Wow. I mean, the priest and Levite couldn't do that. Apart from them not wanting to be unclean because they wanted to please God. But yet God is pleased by the things we do. And you can't give away what you don't have. It is your God-given right and responsibility to be time-free, resourced, and available to fulfill the Great Commission. That's powerful. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 20. Now, all of this stuff is stuff that I'm, I, I'm living, and so I'm not trying to teach you something that I'm not living myself. I want to encourage you that this is God's heart for you. He wants you to be time-free not caught up in a nine to five job or not caught up with just trying to meet the mortgage or caught up with trying to get a budget that you just can't live or, or you, the responsibilities are overwhelming. He doesn't want you to live that way. So you got yourself into it and let's help you get out of it. And I'm not trying to bring a condemnation. It's just a, you know, we call it tracing, facing and replacing. Trace the problem, face it and then replace it. The good news is this, if it's your fault <laughs> because of your thinking, then it can be changed. We can't change other people, but we can change ourselves. We've gone through COVID and, and we should have been going downward, but we went upward. We didn't just survive, we went up. And I want to just encourage you, and I'll show you some stats on that in, in, a, in a few minutes. So here are the seven that I've just spoken to you about, and I want to give you an opportunity for a few minutes to, in the chat group, tell me, uh, you know, which is one that's challenging you right now one or two just write the number down you don't have to write the whole sentence but what's what's challenging you right now out of those seven and you go oh yeah i really i really want to see that happening in my life i really want to work on that or i feel that god's really challenging me on that you know which one do you think um one or two that if you can just pop a number in thank you marika's number six um what about others you know steward money well yeah absolutely that's important five jane Helping others beyond yourself. Yeah. How awesome would it be that you can start small? I mean, we'll help you through this stuff, you know, start small and grow. Because when you start to do this, it's our faith that pleases God, the Bible says. But faith without action is dead. And you go, well, how can I do this? You can. doesn't matter what nation you're in. Um, we've just had a loan given out to someone in Kenya 
um, who uh, has been approached by the government to buy fish from him in uh, and so he's got a, it's a nine month process so we've given him a, a loan for a year told him he doesn't have to pay it back for a year it's, it's an interest free loan um, do you know that every month because we're teaching these principles he's actually giving back money he's stewarding it well now do you know it's taken us eight years to find faithful people like that to be able to steward back money that's the first in in many years of giving but we never give up. We keep on doing it. And how exciting because why? He wants to give back an extra 10%. So, and we're going to take all that money it's saved in Kenya and give it to somebody else. Teach them the same principles. What's his family going to look like when he, grow, when he becomes older? He's in his 20s. What's he going to look like? He'll be out of poverty. He wouldn't need to rely on us every single time. What about for others? You know, what's challenging you here? Yeah. It's good to, good to put these down. Why? Because when you speak about these things, you start to have it in the forefront and you start to find solutions for it. Otherwise, at the end of this seminar, it might just end up being another seminar that inspired you but didn't transform you. And we want to begin a tra process of transformation. Wonderful. Thank you for those who are responding. And if you're in a position where you go, I want to, I'm in so much debt, I want to get out, how can I help others? Yeah, come for the workshop. I really encourage you to it. And we're not trying to get this seminar to push you into the workshop, but it would be negligent of us to think, to say to you that in, in two and a half hours, you've got learned everything. Because if you've had a lifestyle that hasn't been work, working well, even if you had the right intentions, you need time to create new habits, which is why that workshop is important might not be for everyone but for some so here's my next question to you can my income produce without me which you can see behind me is my my slogan here that I've had for the day um, on this can my income produce without me really important statement statement that 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 in a certain way God spoke to me about 20 plus years ago um, when I started working you know and and and, and I didn't want to work uh, f for the rest of my life I wanted to produce income that create, helped me live the lifestyle that God had for me. Can my income produce without me? Well, here's a question on that question. Why should my income produce without me? Why should my income produce without me? And some of you might say, well, what, what's wrong with working? Nothing. Nothing wrong with working, but not the way we've been taught to work. Not the way we've been taught to go to school, uh, groomed all the way to university or some sort of a degree or qualification to work and live your life around that we're not that's not how god intended for us we are taught to work hard in the rest of god don't get me wrong i wake up every morning and work hard on my investments but then i go and play hard as well and i go and do the stuff that heavenly father's called me to do and i know a lot of people who are who are feeling frustrated that they would like to do more in the way they were designed to do but are feeling uh, handcuffed how many of you would like to know that it's possible to change that? It is. Now, I changed it when I was minus $200,000 in debt. So I'm not someone sitting here going, I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth. And, and Naresh has walked with me all these years. He can vouch for me on, on this stuff. Um, I know sometimes I say stuff and people say, you, you paint these amazing dreams in the sky. They're pies in the sky that I can never reach. And I say, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm a dreamer. But it's a practical stuff that's coming from it that I want to encourage you with. Why, why is it important to me for these reasons personally? And I want you to think about for your reasons why it's important to you. Gives me back my time, gives me freedom of choices, gives me resources including money and allows me to live my God-given dreams. That's the reason why it's important for me. And I want you to take a moment and because I'm, I'm, I'm short on time and I only have about, you know, probably about 20 minutes left. Um, I want you to think about would you write down the reason why and maybe you've never been asked this question. Maybe you've thought about it. But would you write down two or three reasons for yourself? And you can post it on, this, on the chat group if you like. I'd love to hear back from you as well. Why would you like income to produce without you? What would that mean to you? What sort of life would that give you? You know, I was getting some pictures ready, um, but I didn't put them on here. But I was just looking at my, my, my phone and looking at just, just last few days going to the beach with my little two kids and we're homeschooling. I've got nine children and we're homeschooling our younger two uh, who are four and five. We've decided to create a lifestyle around being able to travel. Um, and uh, for many reasons, I decided that I'm going to homeschool them rather than 
send them to school and it's just great teaching them rather than them going to school to learn about the beach i got to go to the beach with them and play with them during school time as part of their curriculum and uh, there was hardly anyone there and and spend time with my wife and um you know i just it's just an amazing place of opportunity that i have the choice to do that because i have the freedom of time to do the things i've been asked to do and this is one of the things god has called me to steward i want to bring up my children with the best possible opportunities and not just give it over to somebody else yeah i i um i have a picture that i was going to put up here last week that of me going four wheel driving and getting bogged in the mud and having lots of fun with it with my kids on an adventure <laughs> and getting you know just just having fun together um these are what gives me what what would freedom give you i get to travel as matthew said we travel to 6 to 12 countries a year um and we don't ask anyone for money even when we didn't have we don't ask anyone for money you know we just produce so i'm i've only seen a few but hopefully you know put on the chat group um but hopefully some of you are putting some things on there um and and making some choices yeah it's great lin that you're saying you love your job and and i love that people love their jobs and i and I, part of what i suggest to people is what happens when you decide you don't want to love your job anymore or if your job is taking over i'm i'm mentoring someone right now in the who loves his job but in the next 5 years his priorities have changed that we're getting him out of his job giving him an opportunity a choice that if he doesn't want to go to work anymore he doesn't have to i go to work because i want to i i work on my stuff and i enjoy doing i have different careers i've just uh, finished my celebrant license and i did just did a funeral the other day and you know those are powerful things i i get paid to do weddings and funerals and stuff from a celebrant civil celebrant point of view and it's another source of income that yes it's active but i i get a choice to do that thank you for those who've been who've been typing some things in on these questions uh just to get you thinking a little bit this is a book that i wrote last year um took about over 5 years to write and over 15 years of research Uh, of better than the tides and just talking about the hope of today and it's important for us to get rid of the money distractions in our life and uh, one of the things that i extract from that book is around genesis 26 which is that it says that I, there was a drought in the land and isaac began to prosper continue to prosper and is very prosperous indeed and there is four stages in our financial life that we would need to look at and we can do this in any part of our life but i'm just looking at the wealth side of life and you could be in one of these four areas broke breakthrough flow or overflow and and broke is exactly as it says i don't have enough to pay for my basic needs and fa- breakthrough is that i have enough to pay for my basic needs such as my rent mortgage uh, but i don't have enough for savings holidays luxury flow is like a measure of 1 to 10 and i'm in the flow moving to overflow i'm not yet at overflow i have enough financial flow without my personal input to live comfortably now some people say they can live comfortably but then i say take out your personal input of income which is i e normally a job active income and they go back to broke or breakthrough and i just want you to just think through this and i just want you to confront this it's not about saying one is better person's better than the other but what has god designed you for like i can stop having personal input and i still have flow in my life but there was a time where and this is where tides doesn't work i was tiding i was going through broke breakthrough flow broke breakthrough flow and it's a roller coaster and i stopped that and i started giving and i started looking at principles of creating wealth and i started moving into the flow and this is what's exciting for me overflow is where we live on 80 to 90% on 10 to 20% sorry of our income and give away 80 to 90%. Like I give away more than 10% and this is not to brag, this is to say it's so exciting to be able to do that. Like I don't because the word tithe is only 10%. And you are not cursed if you don't tithe because God Christ has made a curse for you. That's another story altogether. Get the book if you need to because it gets you financial breakthroughs and something every Christian needs to hear and every church pastor needs to change his mind or her mind on what they say in their church on behind their pulpit. I want to encourage you that I've discovered around the world and I need some input from you that the most anyone needs is 100 to 200,000 dollars a year annual income to live off. Would anyone say they need more than that? Or would everyone be, agree with me? And I've traveled extensively. I haven't traveled to every country yet, but that is one of my 
my uh, goals that I've asked the Lord to, uh, as long as it takes, so I'm happy to live till 500 years of age um, and not and not uh, look 500 years old. Um, this shell's got to keep going till it's till God says it's time. But in most countries that I've been to, 100 to 200 thousand dollars a year or less is more than adequate. Now, let me ask you a question. What if God can enable you to steward a, th a million dollar income? See, you could give that away because you now know what you can live off. When you have a, a portion, your luxury doesn't start growing. What happens is your stewarding starts growing and God can trust you more. What would it look like if he wants you to steward a billion dollar income? Because then you can start to steward your community and, and, and part of that looks like that I can go to my community and start asking my community to give me the problems in my community and ask the government, local governments, to give me the problems that are, they're facing and we'll take care of them, like homelessness or like um, youth uh, drug abuse or, or like women being uh, abused by husbands and, and, and needing a place to, to run shelter with their children, that we can start to enforce that with the monies that we have, not from the government monies, and reduce the taxes on people. How exciting would that be if you can learn to steward that well? How would it look like if you can steward trillions of dollars and take help to uh, steward well nations? You know, we're good at pointing out how badly our government do things. Well, why don't we be the difference? Start with something small and move further. Hope that's making sense to you. I want you to think about where you, you are in this and where you'd like to be without personal input from yourself. And be honest with yourself because if I was honest with myself. I was broke. I was dead broke. Um, I went to breakthrough. I had a flow for years, but it was through active income. I then you know, had one of the worst financial upturns in my life, but more importantly, one of the worst emotional and, uh, and relational upturns in my life, and went back to broke, and then learned how to get through breakthrough permanently. And that's what we call economic independence. What does it look like to go into flow and overflow and, and be there saying, God, use me the way you want me to be, and be free to just do the things that you've been called to do and designed for? Do you think heaven's clapping on that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you think heaven wants to be part of that? Yeah. Waiting for your cooperation. So here are simple things that I'm doing for this decade. 2021 forward. My wealth steps for this decade. Three little steps that hopefully will help you make money from nothing. Is that possible? Yeah, I'm going to share with you how. Make money, make money. And make your investments multiply twofold, five, ten, thirty, sixty, a hundredfold. That's from the scriptures, from parables in the in the Bible. Um, God's not interested in in thirty percent returns. I mean, we think that's awesome. We're doing, but He's like going multiply. I created you to multiply. When God spoke to me on that, it changed my whole mindset. I stopped looking for the five cent returns, the five percent returns, the two percent returns, the ten, and I started looking at multiples. So when we say 30 and people go, that's a lot, <laughs> that's nothing for what heaven wants. See, the, the, the world has, has tried to constrain our brain and our thinking. The banks don't want us to hear how much they make multiples of our money. And you just need to hear Nourish on the workshop to, to, to give you the facts on this. He's not, a, he's not just giving you emotional hype and anger he's and frustration. He's talking about facts, factual information. Uh, that, that tell us what the banks use our money for, that now we're taking back and saying, let's start doing it ourselves because we'd rather steward the money well. So let's get into this for the, the last few minutes that I have. Make money from nothing. Oops, how do I do that? How do I make money, make money? And, and how do I make my investments multiply? Well, first of all, let me say to you that the quickest way to transformation is through imitation. It's scriptural. It's in the Bible. It's why Jesus told his disciples to follow him. It's why he wasn't interested in the 5,000 followers plus that wanted to make him king. It's why he was interested in the 12 that he tapped on the shoulder and said, would you follow me? And let me explain to you that if you go through imitation, it's the quickest way to transform. Um, Matthew said he's going to be turning 70 this year. He said if he could go back to his 40-year-old self and say stuff, and I wave my hands frantically and say, I'm going to be 45 this year, and if you can teach me the stuff you do, and, and he said, come follow me, and I follow him. Narish is in his 50s, and, and, and he, uh, he, if he can teach me the stuff that he's learned I'll, I'll be able to pay my home loan off in a much quicker time than he does. I've just already, just by his information, repetition, like 
I don't, we don't just present, we learn from one another and from him teaching me stuff, I've already shaved $11,000 off my home loan over the next two years. Not by doing anything else, but by just having a conversation with the bank that took me two hours to get everything in place over a two week period and bang, done, $11,000 better, better off. Is that good or is that good? But wait, there's more. I put that 11000 back into the loan and have reduced uh, nine years off my loan just by doing that. How crazy is that? Okay, but that's from learning, imitation. Otherwise, if you don't do that, then information leads to frustration. Like we're giving you information, you're excited about this because you're staying on, you know. And if you're staying on to listen to this stuff, it means that you're ready to learn. But if you're frustrated, it's because you're, there's no one you're imitating. And don't imitate people who just talk the talk. Imitate people who have fruit. Jesus said that by this, they may, you may know that the others may know you're my disciples by your fruit. Fruit of repentance, changing your mind, and fruit to produce. So how do you make money from nothing? Well, let me give you some ideas. Let me start with a statement from uh, Matthew's best friend, Warren Buffett. It says, never, <laughs> uh, never depends on a single, on earning, never depend on a single income. Make investment to create a second source. Or we say, you know, seven or eight sources of income. Here's a business wheel that I have adopted and used over the decades that have worked with me to help set up businesses without capital and helped others to set up businesses without capital. And you do well to, to, uh, to learn this if you're interested to produce income that runs without you. See, not self-employment, but business owners. Uh, you can do this by monetizing a hobby, a skill, a qualification, solving a problem, or becoming a coach of transformation. The first step is find a product or service. If you're interested, take note of this. Not everyone would be interested in starting a business without capital, but I'd suggest to you that if you have, a, if you have nothing, then you can start with nothing. Because I've done it seven times over. I've taught people in many different places and countries, including Australia and overseas, in Africa, in India, um, in Myanmar, um, and we're seeing things taking place in Malaysia, and it's, you know, it's exciting doing it in America, doing it in Canada, seeing things taking place slowly with people who are doing this. Uh, sec step two, most people forget to do this is research. Once you found a product or service is research. Do your research. Find out your niche people that would buy from you. There's 7.4 billion people in the world. You don't need everyone to buy from you. You just need someone and the right people. Add value to it. Add value. Do something different from others. And when you do something different that others don't do, um, that's where your compet you, get, you exceed from the competition. Learn about marketing and sales. Marketing, I'll give you a clue. I'm the expert on relational marketing. You'll find no one better than what I teach. I'm not arrogant. I'm confident because it works. I don't go doing all these ads, Facebook ads and all that stuff. I do relationships and they work because I want to transform a few and I don't need a whole lot uh, to produce income from. Marketing is education. Sales is inevitable once you understand about relational marketing. Now, it's not for everyone. People like maybe to send out lists of millions of people and get some response of 3% or so, but our responses are normally 70 to 90% because we're, we're, we're interested in the person and we want to walk with them just like Jesus did. Transform one and you transform the world because you teach them to transform others. And fi finally, customer service. So important how you deliver your delivery is very important and then what do you do? continue to give back to the person and those five steps they look simple and maybe go oh, I probably know this but if you want to do anything well in business simple five steps but they're profound that I can suggest to you and here's an example of someone turning their hobby into a business that I help them with and give them an idea where they could create a hundred thousand dollars by working just 3.86 days a week and having three hour, three one hour groups per day in teaching guitar lessons. That's a hobby. You can do it for anything. Here's the spreadsheet, the numbers don't lie. And you can just move these numbers around that are in the highlighted boxes and you can change the amount of income you want for the year and you can choose. I've just got someone uh, helping him out who's looking at 20,000 uh, in, 20, in 2021 that he can do as a side hustle move his hobby into a business and eventually in the next two years he can choose not to work if he doesn't want to and you don't have to start with any capital here's the great news 
Here's another example that I've done with my property. It's an old property, mum and dad's. We grew up in this in Australia. Um, it, it has a lot of significant value to us. We decided to upgrade after dad passed. Um, we look after our mum. She's our queen in our home, and uh, and we're, it's very important to us. Family's important. So I had this house that's lasted. I, it's meant. To, I think it's probably a hundred years old. <laughs> it's it's old. Um, and and we asked the rental agency how much would be to rent the whole house out, and they said four fifty a week. That's about twenty three thousand a year. For some of you, you might say that's good. Here's what I did with it, using my business skills. I rented out to flatmates, and I, and, and the potential income, if it's full at 52 weeks is 58k a year that's 2.5 times more with little effort how many of you think that's good you know you could either have 20 properties or you could have two or three properties doing this stuff and producing positive cash okay and and it helps with our lifestyle so it produces and I'm not active in it I'm a little bit active I, I go there clean up the garden a little bit talk to the flatmates have a good relationship with them but everything is done on whatsapp everything is sent through um, social media we've got banks that transfer everything when there's a problem we, we get our workers out there and it's not a hard thing to do if you're just willing to and it's producing 2.5 times more just to give you an idea of how you can do that all right the next thing how to make money make more money make money make money people say how do you do that well Warren Buffett says if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep you will work until you die so how do I make money make more money well just over COVID time we've been uh, using an instrument this is one instrument of many that have been returning profits and Matthew alluded to the idea of 30 percent well here's something that was returning uh, over every five week period we got here's a 3.34 percent return if you multiply that 10 times you get a profit of how much 33 percent over the year all right this was on the 23rd of march 2020 during when COVID hit um, people say stocks are bad well this is better than stocks because it's in the forex industry and it and it, it goes up whether you go up or down you're still working uh, you're still making money and i'm i'm an investor in here we're not uh, traders, we don't have to learn a new skill. We just have to make sure the skills of the traders are good. Look at this, 6.9, 5.8, 3.09%. Multiply that by 10 and that's how much you get in a year. You think 30% is huge. This is some of the performance we were getting during COVID time. April, this is when we started getting lockdowns happening worldwide. May, look at the returns. Okay, and these are just real information. Uh, profit of $1.2 million trader made during may june of last year again during COVID time um you know these i can't pull out these numbers any other way it looks too good to be true but they're real now is it a high risk yes we don't put all our money in here we put 15 percent or less of our savings but we've mitigated the risk we've lowered the risk sorry we haven't eliminated it we've lowered the risk by knowing what we're doing and following others that are producing fruit as well in seven years, uh, money hasn't been lost in these. I've done it for about four to five years now. In 18 months, I managed to double my capital and take away all the risk. So I put my money in, doubled it, compound interest, took out my capital, and now the money that's in there is interest. So guess what? No risk. Why? Because if I lose the money, it was money I never had in the first place, thanks to Matthew who's taught me this stuff. You know, and I'm teaching others to multiply. I was creating, I was creating a USD of 2K a month. It's now moved up to about 4K a month. Uh, the goal is by the end of this year to create an 8K a month income. And so that's a residual income that is equivalent to someone's salary. Isn't that good? This is a performance that, uh, in January of this year that Matthew gave last month that we had achieved during COVID times. 31%, 30%, 52%, 36%. 39 and 43 percent you can see we diversify but we're still getting some really good returns and that's nothing than the good stuff there's even better stuff but we start with this start somewhere hope that encourages someone because it is possible to do and again we're not gamblers i've got nine children i've got two families to run both here and in kenya to look after so i'm i'm not i have to be a smart person in this number three as i finish off how do you multiply investments Twofold, five, ten, thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. Well, here's a statement. On average, millionaires have seven income streams, while the middle class only have one. Their jobs. Okay, something to think about. Matthew talked about this. Um, 
I found just re- now, Matthew, this is actually good. We found an extra one called residual income that I think is pretty good. That's so eight sources of income. And uh, it's quite exciting. The, here's eight ways that you can produce income. What have you not producing from? What can you add to? You know, if you can make it to the workshop, come to the workshop. We'll, we'll grill, drill down on all this stuff even more because there's only so much we can do in two and a half hours. The idea is that we want to get you out of active income into passive income. Is that making sense to anyone? Okay, you got to you got to think this stuff so you can start to create your own futures. And again, this is not us trying to uh, teach you something impractical or improbable. This is stuff that we're working on. We're not asking you to do things that we haven't done ourselves, and we're not asking you to go a journey that we haven't gone ourselves. And it's an invitation. It's not a challenge. This is not a condemnation that if you don't do this, God hates you or something like that. This is actually an invitation. Hey, come see where where we are going because there's a better world in what we are doing that is creating wealth that is so much better than what we knew and what we learned. Here's something that I teach in the in the workshop. Twelve ways that you can have wealth strategies that Naresh is, covers, Matthew covers, and I cover. This is the st- sort of things that you learn in the workshop. And you're welcome to take a screenshot of this and, and see what are you planning on, what are you not planning on. If you just work on this for the next 12 months, each month review one area, and you'll be so much better off by the end of 2021. We're, we're fo- facing this new decade with optimism, not pessimism. We're facing it even for in Melbourne, we were told that Melbourne's going down and, and we're facing and saying, no, Melbourne's going up. We're going we're gonna to bring Melbourne out of where it is. We're going to bring Australia out of where it is. We're going to bring the nations that you represent out of where the economic crisis is. But we're going to put it in the hands of people that are willing to steward things well. Can a few change the world? Yeah, history's shown us that. Absolutely. Are you willing to be one of those few? It's not for everyone. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to force everyone to be a multi-billionaire, although I expect that everyone should be, because heaven expects that, because that's the minor things. The value of a soul that none should perish. So what's my next step? Just to encourage you, what's the next step if you're ready to take transformation? Is true imitation. Walk on a journey. Uh, is wealth creation habits a priority to you this year? may not be for everyone, but is, if it is for you, then invest, because I did that a few years ago, and I continue to invest. Enroll in the workshop. It commences next Saturday for four weeks, and we deep dive. So we're not withholding anything from you, precious people. We're not, we're not withholding all the information we've given you here. If you've taken screenshots of this, you have the video available. Literally, you could do this yourself, but it's a frustration because you may not know how to do it. And having someone walk with you helps you. It's valued at $9,000 plus, but we're doing it for $200 Aussie dollars. Right. That's that's a very good value. And as we've said before, if you don't if you're not happy with it, we'll refund your money. I'll even double and refund your money twice as much by the end of the four weeks. Why? Because we know that this stuff works. This is our life. This is what we've walked with so that it frees us up to do what God has called us to do. We've gotten rid of the money distractions and we continue to apply the same principles over and over again. What are we going to cover? Set yourself up for permanent financial breakthroughs. And I mean it's permanent because like, I can tell you, testify that myself. Strategies on creating wealth through debt reductions and techniques. Simple, effective ways to invest income wisely in low, medium risks in the high risk category, which is what the rich do. Create multiple streams of income. Choose when you would like to retire. I like that one. <laughs> Not everyone else does, but maybe I, that's up to them. I like it. Build business without capital. Set up business to work without you to free you up. Live life and purpose. Plus, on top of that, you'll get a one-to-one complimentary consult with each of the mentors. Like, I can't, we can't give you more on that. Why are we doing this? Because for us, it's what we want to give back. It's this 3 John 1, 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. You can only rise to the level of your soul, your mind. You will only be as rich as your mind is. And if you've had a desire but not had breakthrough, it's more than likely you have a poverty mindset, not because of choice, but because of environmental influences. Change the environment. Start to fly with eagles. Because you might be an eagle that's been clucking with chickens. 
And even if you fly lower than all the other eagles, you're still flying higher than those fat chickens that are there for somebody's meal. Don't be the meal. Don't eat what chickens eat. You'll starve. And that's probably why you felt frustrated all these years, is that you've been eating chicken, chicken food. Be an eagle. That's how you were created. You know? and, and we want to be part of that journey with you. And we want to offer you this. And, and as Matthew said, and, and Narish and I agree with that, we don't need your money. And $200 is nothing. You know, we, we just want you to invest because you, it's a power of sowing and reaping. Bread for the eater and seed for the sower.